Story recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a horror, mystery, thriller film called The Possession of Hannah Grace. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In a church's attic, two priests perform an exorcism on a young woman tied to the bed. The young woman, Hannah, doesn't react to his prayers, opting for the priest to check on her. Hannah's father, Granger, is in tears, not knowing if they could save his daughter's life. Suddenly, Hannah's eyes open with one bright blue eye. She knocks down the older priest, laughing maniacally as her body contorts. The younger priest douses her with holy water while the older priest continues the exorcism. Hannah screams painfully, alerting Granger to beg for her to fight the demon inside. Her beastly growl quiets, and for a moment, her eyes turn back to brown as she recognizes her father. She looks to her father mournfully but is quickly overcome by the demon again. One of her eyes turns back to blue, and she breaks out laughing. The older priest stops his prayer abruptly, falling into the demon's control. Hannah shrieks as she telepathically pushes the priest into a spike on the wall. Next, she chokes the younger priest in midair. Granger attempts to save the priest, but he's powerless. The demon speaks in a deep voice, claiming Hannah's soul is his for eternity. Hearing this, Granger accepts that there is no hope for his daughter, but he cannot let the evil free in the world. With a heavy heart, he takes a pillow and smothers his own daughter until her limbs no longer move. As soon as Hannah's gone, the younger priest is freed from the demon's chokehold. Granger grieves over his daughter, not noticing a fly landing on her hand, making her hand twitch. Three months later, ex-cop Megan Reed lands a night shift job at the Boston Metro Hospital's morgue with the help of her friend, Lisa. Dr. Lewis gives Megan a tour of the facility and shows her how to take in corpses and document information from them. Working in a morgue at night has scared off many employees, but Megan is not bothered by the dead, believing that death is permanent. Dr. Lewis welcomes Megan to the team, who's eager to start a new chapter of her life. On her first shift, Megan meets the security guards Ernie and Dave before heading to the morgue. Her night is spent transcribing reports until the motion-triggered lights go off. She heads out to activate them but is startled by the alarm, announcing that a body is about to be delivered through the intake bay. Despite her stoic demeanor about the job, Megan feels uneasy as she receives the first cadaver she has to process alone. Following protocol, she takes images of the body and scans the fingerprints for identification. As she wheels in the first body into the refrigerated drawer, Dave pops in, startling her. Dave apologizes for scaring her, but Megan is not interested in hearing more. The rest of the night starts to get boring, as there is not much to do. Megan makes a ball out of rubber bands before heading to the bathroom. She accidentally triggers the hand dryer as she exits, making her jump. Walking back to her post, Megan spots a man standing in the middle of the hallway. The man disappears in front of her eyes, and her memories flash before her eyes. She hears a man asking, why didn't you shoot? Then sees her ex-partner with whitened eyes. She snaps back into reality, heaving and shaking. She heads for her purse, spilling pills into her hands. Staring down on the pills, she questions her condition. Her troubled past haunts her, but she refuses to be brought down by it anymore. Megan remembers sitting at group therapy, recounting the turning point in her life when she froze in front of a criminal. The man shoots at her but instead mortally wounds her partner. The guilt led her to turn to pills, ending her career and destroying her relationship with a fellow cop, Andrew. Andrew visits Megan the following day to get the rest of his things from her apartment. Here he learns about her new job at the morgue, which worries him. Megan, however, believes that working a night shift will keep her busy and out of trouble. The conversation turns into them blaming each other for their failed relationship, which ends with Andrew awkwardly leaving. That evening, Megan throws her makeshift ball at the wall to pass the time. The alarm blares, alerting her that a body is about to be delivered. She heads to the intake bay, but she only finds a hooded man who asks her to open the door. Knowing better, Megan refuses to let him in. When the man becomes aggressive, Megan backs away to the elevator and reports him to security. Not long after, the alarm alerts her again. This time, it's an EMT named Randy, delivering a body. Megan helps him get the body off the ambulance, not noticing the hooded man slip in behind them and use the elevator. Megan learns that the body was found in an alley with a man still slicing her before escaping. Megan identifies her as Hannah Grace. Upon opening the body bag, Megan is horrified at the corpse's condition. According to Randy, there are traces of chloroform in her body, and that her injuries are post-mortem. Megan studies the body, appalled by its condition. Randy leaves her with Hannah, promising the newbie that the job gets easier. After Megan returns to the receiving room, the lights at the end of the hallway flickering on. Someone else is on the floor with her. Megan takes photos of the body, but the camera keeps failing to load the image. When she tries for the third time, the camera electrocutes her, forcing her to stop. Carrying on, Megan loads Hannah's fingerprints into the system, but it fails as well. As Megan wheels the body inside the drawer, the room starts to shake, causing test tubes to fall and break on the floor. Megan cleans up and gets scratched by the glass, leaving a drop of blood on Hannah's body when she secures it inside the drawer. Megan tends to her wound but stops when the drawer opens up behind her. She looks inside then closes it again. Suspicious of the events, Megan tries to log into the police department's database, but her account is already suspended. 
Megan uses Andrew's login instead, guessing his password is her name correctly. This allows her to pull up Hannah's ID and notices something that doesn't add up. She heads to the morgue and opens up Hannah's body bag, noting that her eyes are supposed to be brown, but instead, it's vividly blue. As she stares into Hannah's eye, a fly distracts her. She opens the bag further, revealing hundreds of flies come out of Hannah's body. But when Megan looks back, the flies are gone. She checks inside before zipping up the bag again and storing it inside. Heading back to her desk, she removes her coat and calms herself down. The sound of the elevator alerts her. Thinking it's Dave again, she calls him out, but there's no response. Megan looks into the morgue and finds Hannah's body is missing. The other door swings close, and she sees the body sliding down the hallway. Scared, Megan slowly peeks around the corner then hurries down the hallway, only to be attacked by the hooded man. He pins her to the wall and threatens to cut her throat. But Megan fights back, forcing the knife out of his hand before knocking him down. After grabbing the knife, she turns to fight, but the hooded man disappears. Megan rushes back to her desk, alerting security that the hooded man is inside. She searches for the hooded man and finds the doors down the hall shut as she turns the corner. Inside, she finds the hooded man ready to put Hannah's body in the incinerator. Megan tries to calm the man down, but Dave enters, distracting her enough to allow the hooded man to tackle her. Dave and Ernie grab and handcuff him while the hooded man pleads for them to destroy the body. He screams that Hannah is not dead just before he's taken away. Back in the morgue, Megan puts Hannah's body away, but the drawer opens as soon as she backs away. Refusing to believe in the man's claims, she opens the drawer and checks on the corpse again. Her phone rings, distracting her. Megan answers Andrew's call, worried about her after hearing that she got attacked at her job. While she's facing away, Hannah's body moves, and Megan notices that it has changed position. Megan peers into the corpse and sees it exhale. Frightened, Megan closes up the bag and leaves. She waves her hands to activate the lights again, but they don't switch on until she spots Lisa in the stairwell. Having heard about the hooded man, Lisa offers to let someone cover Megan's shift. Not wanting to give up and let someone else take over, Megan decides to stay despite Lisa's insistence that she should rest. Noticing Megan's uneasiness, Lisa becomes concerned. Megan confesses that she heard Hannah's corpse breathe. Lisa explains that corpses sometimes let out air when they're moved, comforting Megan. Feeling better about the night, Megan and Lisa have lunch together. Megan shares that she didn't freeze when she saw the hooded man and was focused on defending herself. She questions why she couldn't do that on the night her partner died. Lisa encourages her that it's progress for her healing. Dave walks in, announcing that someone is here to visit Megan. The women head out, leaving Dave alone as the drawer to Hannah's body opens again. Megan meets with Andrew, who lets her know that the hooded man isn't talking to them. Seeing her stressed, Andrew is concerned, knowing how she reacts to such pressure. He accuses Megan of taking a bottle of Xanax from the items that he retrieved from her home, offending her. Before Andrew leaves, Megan gives him Hannah's fingerprints to get more information from the police database. Megan thinks that Hannah's ID is a fake, given her mismatched eye color. Back in the morgue, Dave takes Megan's rubber ball and pretends to be a baseball player. He hears heavy footsteps inside the morgue and is surprised to see the same rubber ball inside, which he was playing with in the hallway earlier. Dave hears movement inside one of the drawers and hesitantly opens it. He peers inside, but a pair of hands grab his head from above. Suddenly, the room shakes violently as Dave is pushed up against the door by an invisible force. He floats in midair as his limbs painfully distort. His body is dragged against the ceiling until he drops into an empty drawer. The drawer shuts, and Dave's screams abruptly stop. The lights flicker back on as Megan walks back inside. Confused, Megan searches for Dave but cannot find him. She heads to the ladies' bathroom, gazing down the hall before entering. Inside a bathroom stall, she sends Andrew a text, apologizing for her behavior earlier. She's confused when she hears the bathroom door open, then a hand dryer blasts on. She calls out, thinking that it's Dave. Nervous at the heavy footsteps, she begins to dress but stops when her rubber ball rolls into the stall. Scared, Megan checks under the door but finds the room empty. She gets up, only to be startled by a rotting hand grabbing the ball from under her. Megan shakes her head, thinking that she's delirious and imagining things. Slowly, she walks out of the stall, checking the other stalls before leaving the bathroom. Later that evening, Andrew reports that Hannah Grace has been declared dead for three months. With all the strange things happening tonight, Megan gets nervous at this discovery. She searches the web for Hannah, seeing a news report claiming she died after an exorcism. Her family and the church believe that a demon possessed her. Megan rechecks the body and notices that the gash on Hannah's side is gone. Hoping to find answers, Megan checks the security footage from earlier this evening, where she sees a distorted figure appearing in the hallway. She goes for her pills but stops herself from taking them. Instead, Megan asks Lisa for help. She shows her the figure on the footage and explains the hooded man's claims about Hannah. But Lisa spots her pills and accuses her of relapsing. Lisa believes that Megan sees things due to her brain wanting her to retake the pills. She scolds her for believing in the illusion but affirms Megan that she trusts her enough to leave the bottle of pills with her. Lisa leaves, taking the stairway to have a smoke. While she's alone, blood drops on her hands. Looking up, she spots Dave from the upper stairs and heads up, worried that he's hurt. She finds the lifeless Dave standing in a corner then runs when Hannah's corpse scrambles towards her. 
Lisa reaches the hospital's rooftop, searching for the strange figure. The lights flash, revealing Hannah standing on the other side. Lisa is lifted into the air as Hannah approaches her. Her limbs distort in awkward angles until she drops dead. Back in the morgue, Megan receives an alert that Randy has brought in a new body. She refuses to help him this time, given that the hooded man slipped in earlier when she did. Megan shows Randy the corpse again, pointing out that the gash on her side is gone and that her arm is no longer bent. Megan shares her theory that Hannah is healing herself, given that she was supposed to have died three months ago after an exorcism and that the hooded man claimed that she's not really dead. Noting her skills, Randy wonders why she's even working the night shift at a morgue but drops the question upon seeing her reaction. Instead, he shares how he used to have a drinking problem until his son was born, giving him a reason to straighten out his life. Unbeknownst to them, Hannah's wounds continue to heal behind them. Inspired by Randy's honesty, Megan calls Andrew after Randy leaves. While she confesses that she did keep his bottle of Xanax, the elevator opens behind Megan, and Hannah crawls inside, her body continuing to heal. Back at the intake bay, Randy places back the gurney inside the ambulance when he hears the alarm on his driver's seat door. He finds the door open and checks inside but sees nothing wrong. He gets in, checking behind to make sure that there's nobody in the vehicle. Once convinced, he starts the ambulance but runs over something while driving out of the garage. He looks under the car, seeing nothing under. His phone rings, but when he answers it, the connection breaks. The lights begin to flicker, and Randy looks around, hearing movement. Having noticed the elevator door close behind her, Megan checks the security footage to find that Hannah's body has crawled inside the elevator. In the parking area, Hannah's broken corpse chases after Randy, trapping him between two ambulances. Hannah crawls over him and breaks his neck. Megan reaches the parking area, desperately searching for Randy. But she's too late, she finds him lifeless in front of an ambulance. Andrew calls to warn Megan that the hooded man escaped. The hooded man ambushes Megan from behind, holding her at gunpoint as she takes him to the morgue to show Hannah's body. After everything she'd seen, Megan assures him that she believes him now. Trusting her, the hooded man reveals that he's Hannah's father, Granger, and he cannot allow the evil thing inside his daughter's body to win. Granger recounts how Hannah struggled with depression until the demon was able to get inside. That's when Hannah's color changed from brown to blue. Even after Hannah died in the exorcism, her body disappeared, leaving the people in the mortuary dead in her wake. He wonders why Hannah hasn't killed Megan yet. Megan prepares the incinerator, convinced that it's the only way to end it. But Hannah wakes up, touching Megan fondly before grabbing her neck. Granger breaks Hannah's wrist and throws Megan out of the way before getting pushed into the incinerator, burning alive. With the father gone, Hannah turns to Megan, who struggles to escape. She tries to open the doors, but her entry pass won't work. Megan runs to the elevators, which closes just before Hannah gets in. Taking a moment to breathe, Megan jumps when Hannah appears behind her just as the elevator doors open to the mezzanine. Megan struggles to walk, with Hannah still on her trail. Meanwhile, Andrew finds Megan's phone in the parking lot near Randy's body. He radios for backup but gets distracted when the doors to the intake bay open and close. At the mezzanine, Megan struggles to move, allowing Hannah to crawl up to her and put her to sleep. Downstairs, Andrew heads to the morgue, searching for Megan. Hannah hears him and drags Megan away. Andrew searches in the dark with only his flashlight to illuminate his way. He looks around, not knowing that Megan is inside the refrigerated drawers where Lisa's and Dave's bodies are as well. Outside, Andrew finds Ernie, who's searching for Dave. The two rush back to the morgue upon hearing one of the doors snap open. Megan has escaped from the drawers, warning them to flee. A screeching noise blares in their ears, and Ernie spots Hannah in a corner. The three run for the elevators, but Hannah catches Ernie and slits his throat, healing her own wound. She telepathically lifts Andrew in midair, stretching his limbs. Seeing herself back in the same situation, Megan refuses to freeze in fear. She stares down at Hannah, who is confused at her sudden bravado. Hannah backs away as Megan grabs Andrew's gun and shoots the creature repeatedly until she collapses. The lights explode, and Andrew falls to the floor, hurt but alive. After putting Andrew in the elevator, Megan checks back on Hannah, seeing that she's still on the floor. Knowing that it's not over yet, Megan tells Andrew to call for help as the elevator door closes. No longer afraid, Megan drags Hannah's body into the incinerator. With Hannah halfway inside, she grabs Megan, pulling her inside with her. Hannah screams in pain as Megan wrestles her off, closing the doors to finally end the nightmare. Tired, Megan stays in the morgue, throwing her rubber ball against the wall as the police finally arrive. Weeks later, Megan celebrates being 62 days clean. As her body heals, she jogs faster and feels stronger. She looks at herself in the mirror, spotting a fly landing on it. She swats the fly with her bare hands, knowing that nothing can stop her now. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.